I have a PowerPoint. I had a PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for this invitation. As um, you said before, I have spent most of my life, uh, the last 10 years in Afghanistan, in Angola, in Mozambique, in Sudan. And then landing here in the Big Apple is definitely quite an experience. And if you live in post-conflict countries, being at such a conference and hearing what people have to say and what university professors have to say about peace, and nothing of that is really, really in the discourse where we are working. As a matter of fact, the word makes people many, of, many times nervous. It is also exciting. But then I'm thinking back where I've spent the last two years in Abiyé, for example, where schools have been destroyed, teachers have been killed, people have been driven out, parents are irritated, children don't know what is going on, and if they have any school at all, they're sitting on the ground or on a plastic sheet. All these fantastic thoughts, they are so relevant, and zero is available. Or if you go to Darfur, where people are sitting since 10, 12 years in camps, which they thought they might leave maybe in six or eight months' time, and schooling is also quite bad. Quite bad. So what can we do? What can we do as educators for peace building, reaching out to these people? This is a little bit the purpose of my presentation. I would like to first talk a little bit about uh, definitions, then UN peace building areas of intervention, UNICEF's interest in peace building, the structural and psychosocial conflict drivers, education for peace building intervention areas, and then give you a practical example, the example of Sierra Leone. Forgive me that I talk about peace definitions. You have heard peace all day. But when I talk about peace, people are asking, what is peace? It's such a fluffy concept. And when people get into the discussion, sometimes they start arguing and fighting. And from peace, we are entering into conflict. So I need to say what I understand from peace. And that is actually my personal um, opinion. I'm not representing an official opinion of UNICEF here. Peace is a harmonious, interpsychic, interpersonal, and intragroup cooperation between entities involved. Conflict is defined as opposing desires, needs, interests, and goals of individuals and groups. Usually conflict starts on material issues. It, it very soon, if it doesn't become resolved, it becomes psychological. It then becomes violent, persistent, and intractable. And sometimes conflict leads to mass killing and genocide. Peace building, according to the UN, means support structures which will tend to strengthen and solidify peace in order to avoid a relapse into conflict. As you mo know, most of the countries which have experienced conflict and which are now called post-conflict countries eventually relapse into conflict. Ban Ki-moon recently said, building peace is much more than ending war. It is about putting in place the institutions and trust that will carry people forward into a peaceful future we often have a limited window of opportunity in which to do this. The traditional areas of intervention in the United Nations were support to basic safety and security, support to political processes, support to provision of basic social services, support to restoring core government functioning, and support to economic revitalization. So whenever there is a country emerging from conflict, those are theoretically the areas you would want to focus on. But practically, basic social services thinking has always been a stepchild until recently. Why would education bring peace? Why would water bring peace? Don't we first have to demilitarize? Don't we first have to take arms, or uh, take arms away? Don't we first have to strengthen the government and corruption have elections? Education, Peace building, peace building, water for peace building, health. Yes, it comes later, but first things first, that's governance and basic safety. Only lately, people are recognizing that yes, people care for education, and if social services are unequally distributed, people get very angry and conflict might uh, re erupt. So, then what is, what is peace education? Peace education is not the same as education for peace building. Peace education is about the values and content communicated through the education system in support of transformative processes. Peace education can help to change collective memories, change people's attitudes, decrease negative emotions, increase positive emotions, 
willingness what to say, to say what one believes, and it can facilitate change in behavior. But when you only focus on the curriculum, but you don't build the education systems and you make it relevant, very often it might not work. Why is UNICEF interested in peace building? Obviously, children and youth are wasted by conflict and they have the most to gain from peace. Post-conflicts are prone, countries are prone to relapse into conflict and conflict keeps conflict-affected countries behind on MDGs. All our investments are for nothing when conflict uh, re-emerges. UNICEF peace building then and now. We, talked, we are talking about peace building since quite a while, but the thinking is becoming much more critical. Originally, when we go into a humanitarian setting, at the beginning, we were focusing on reconstruction and distribution of supplies, the typical humanitarian approach. But aren't we sure that we are creating new conflicts by giving to some people and perhaps not to others? How do we know what kind of steerings we provoke by giving out things? Then eventually there came the do no harm approach. Whatever you're doing, try at least to do no harm and be conflict sensitive. But now we are considerably interested in transformation of relationships. So no point giving a school in a post-conflict setting where the school afterwards is being used to discriminate against people. It is not easy Education for peace building. If you look at this rather complicated table, it shows us that there are security, political, economic, and social reasons why conflict exists. It will be there are international conflict drivers, regional conflict drivers, national conflict drivers, sub national conflict drivers, local conflict drivers. How can education, the little red word on the right, actually affect this complex network of potential conflict drivers. And in, in addition, there are psychosocial conflict drivers, competition for limited resources, emotions like stress, fear, panic, insecurity, victimization, hurt, and humiliation, prejudice, lack of pro-social orientation, etc. So can education really, just by itself, bring peace? And if it wants to have an impact on peace building, what should be done? We think there are a variety of areas where education can play a role, building social capital, social cohesion, resolving intergroup conflict, shifting social identities, and social network strengthening in order to help to, create, uh, to raise caring, nonviolent, optimally functioning children. But beyond the social, we also have to look at economic. What can we do to create employment? What can we do to give young people the skills so that they are not growing up hopeless and angry. Then there are security-related education aspects, reintegration, disarmament, demobilization, reintegration, building community safety, and human rights education. And finally, political governance. Constitutional reform, political institutions, representation, and elections, all are things which can be addressed through curriculum. Let me quickly explain how we then could engage in education for peace building planning. And I'm giving you the example of Sierra Leone where we are currently working. In Sierra Leone, after emerging from conflict, we had massive, we, we have conducted in the, in the last year a conflict analysis because we want to engage in a peace, education for peace building strategy which relates to the conflict. And the conflict has to be defined by the people who have been experiencing the conflict. So this is what people were saying to us when we were asking them, what are the conflict drivers in your societies? They said, on the one hand, massive regional and urban rural inequalities then, 10 years ago. There was a, there's a, there was a patrimonial system of governance where access to rules, resources and power depended on personal connections. They are calling it connectocracy. So if you're not connected, you're not having any chance. Tribal and regional sectarianism youth alienation, exploitation of natural resources to support conflict or personal gain, and then there was international influence and interference from outside. Um, what is the relationship between conflict drivers and education then? The education system was for the elite so that they could go and study abroad. 
It was actually said by one of the presidents, education is a privilege, not a right. There was a complete collapse of education systems. And for people, education is the chance to escape the trappings of poverty. So when education closes down, they are feeling very much affected. There was lack of access to education. And there was a divisive curriculum. As a matter of fact, the curriculum was used to play people against one another out. People had assumptions and expectations that good education increases social mobility and that they can escape poverty. And people get extremely angry when there is access, lack of access. There's high level of illiteracy and schools used as targets for conflict. Now, what are the conflict drivers still today? Ten years later, almost all these points still exist, according to the focal groups with which we talked. Still inequalities. The services, education services, are irrelevant and inadequate. People realize that will not help us to escape poverty. There are still failures of governance, patrimonial systems. There are still sectarianisms, which can be exploited by politicians. Huge unemployment and continued natural resource exploitation just for private gain. In addition, gender inequalities, breakdown of social norms, presence of violence, and harsh child-rearing practices, lack of transparency in systems, decisions made, poor communication, and also civics and democracy are issues. Education can contribute to peace building, although not just by working in the curriculum area. First of all, Sierra Leoneans love education, so they are open to explore education strategizing. Education programming can address inequalities. Curriculum reforms contribute to social cohesion. Partnerships between education and business can lead to youth empowerment and employment. We can strengthen family learning, parenting skills, early childhood education. We can meet the educational needs of single mothers. If we want single mothers who are completely marginalized to use new child rearing practices, don't we also have to empower them socially, economically, and psychologically? rather than just giving them a training on how to rear children. Target literacy and reform systems to ensure transparency and effectiveness, including participatory localized planning. The challenge, education is multidimensional. As I said in the big table slide before, education alone cannot do it. So agents of peace, we have to have a multi, recognize the multidimensional reality of peace building, which requires cross-sectoral networking and we need to create alliances with other agencies. So what we are going to do in the future is identify educational programs, research strategies that respond to conflict analysis. Um, we will be able to base our programming on a peace-building rationale in addition to rights and equity. We are, have a challenge of developing monitoring and evaluation indicators to measure peace-building changes because we cannot even prove the linkage between education and peace building through experimental study designs, especially in post-conflict settings. We need to generate evidence about and action research the linkage between education and peace building, and we need to foment a shift in thinking. Yes, education yields sustainable benefits for peace in longer term, and not just governance and disarmament. This is a blackboard with some bullet holes. Thank you very much. <laughs>